Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House Escape. Today, I am planning to solve some more of the UMD puzzle hunt. So let's jump into National Museum of Natural History. Oh, this looks interesting. Oh, there's a link right here to a, a spreadsheet for this grid. Oh, that's crazy helpful. Thank you, UMD Puzzle Club. <laughs> Most things in the museum aren't alive, but the butterflies and moths sure are. Walking through the pavilion, you see that these colorful insects always like to match with their favorite flowers. Answers fit into this flower garden in two ways. Row answers read horizontally from the letters on the left side of each row. Each row contains multiple consecutive answers reading left to right, except A and J, which contain one answer. Blooms are six-letter answers that fill the shaded and unshaded hexagons, reading either clockwise or counterclockwise. Bloom clues are divided into three lists, light, medium, and dark. Yeah, it looks like each of the dark blooms has one of these... Looks like some sort of genus or species name. Um, I'm guessing they're types of flowers. We'll probably have to look some of them up later. A bunch of the light and medium blooms, as well as a couple of the dark, have an asterisk. So I think step one is fill in the grid, step two is read the asterisks, and then that probably gives us some hint about how we're tying these uh, genus or species names into the dark blooms. Oh, there's more instructions down here. Yeah, this is, okay, this is a whole nother, whole nother puzzle it looks like. So I'm going to start with the Rose Garden puzzle, and then we will um, move on to the uh, butterfly puzzle, I think. So let's get started in solving this puzzle. Typically with Rose Garden puzzles, I either start at the top or the bottom. But what's what's this bottom clue? Lepidopterist. Lepidopterist, e.g.? Is that like a dermatologist? That's a butterfly scientist? Okay, so science, scientist fits down there. Uh, Citizen Ross says a lepidopterist is a butterfly scientist. We do have a number of the light pink blooms now started. Can we get anything on row I? Best could be maybe greatest. Could Swole be strong? Bulky? So gambling building is probably casino. Formal discussion. Debate? Maybe? Could maybe personal computer is laptop? There are seven in a variety of dip layers. Dragon Engineer says the Never Say Never film focus is Bieber. Oh, that's down here in the dark clues. Okay, the male flower organ, is that the stamen? Pistol. Dadgummit says pistol for, or is, is another possibility. But yeah, I always forget the two as well. Natural gift is probably talent. Points discussed. Topics? I'm gonna go with topics is my guess for that. Citizen Ross says jovial for spirited. Oh, ancient calculator is abacus, says Dragon Engineer. Up here. Um, Dadgummit says dark pink... Dark pink Jenkins is Leroy, yes. Uh, Dadgummit has a few more in here. Um, moved rhythmic rhythmically, I like danced. That was what I had thought of as well, so thank you for that, Dadgummit. Main course is entree, which Dadgummit I saw also got. Warning or announcement could be signal. All right, let's go over to the white ones then. One of the seven seas. For some reason, the first thing that came to mind was Baltic. Hung 10, Dadgummit says is surfed. Citizen Ross says Lochte is Phelps, or Lochte's rival. White dinner cloth is a napkin, and iodide. Citizen Ra also says possibly Arctic. Uh, Non-literal saying is idioms, says Dragon Engineer. The Mona Lisa was painted on this wood. Um, Dragon Engineer says poplar wood. Um, Dadgummit says sandal is also a wood that fits. Let's see if we can start fitting them into the grid. SCI for this set, topics fits. Top also could just be what we're going for for best. Now what about this ENT? Do we have an ENT anywhere in here? Talent? Is early just not late? <laughs> Ball gate and butterfly are all types of valves, says Dragon Engineer. Testudo is the mascot of UMD. Oh, well that makes a lot of sense then. Do you think it's just, do you think it is turtle? How about a white clue that has ism? We have idioms has ism. Cause I was thinking this first row probably ends with ism. A CD can store audio and that locks in idioms. Oh yes, thank you dadgummit. Keith David played the arbiter, says Dragon Engineer. So, oh, is this Bieber? Um, beefy says Citizen Ra for Swole. I like that. And that gives us Feisty, which I see you also wrote. 
Dragon Engineer says part of an LED is diode. Do we know that it's not light or emitting? I, I think emitting's unlikely, but it could be light. Liari says row D is larva or pupa. Uh, does the like mean we have to make it an adjective? Like maybe larval? Let me see, can I can I maybe match larval? I kind of like larval. We have poplar. Do we have V-A-L by any chance in the light pink? Valves, we do. Which means E starts with pop as a religious leader. Oh, Pope. Oh, insular troubled person is diabetic. Defense for follow self or tower. Yeah, that fits. I'm gonna put them in and we'll see if we can build off it. Liari says row F apian jelly is possibly honey. Um, Dadgummit says iodide fits in now. Tick could still be either C. DEF, it's probably it's surfed. Do we have ABE? Debate. Dadgummit says C2 is probably testified. Gave evidence, that makes sense. Dadgummit says iodide locks in diode. Diode. What's the middle one here? Make certain of is a sure. Turn the C into an S. Uh, where did I mess up my C and my S? Defense, yeah. We got stamen. Okay, yes, changing the C gives us stamen. I like that. Diode, not diode with two Ds. Oh my gosh, can't believe I did that one. That was a silly mistake. So spandex is lycra and C is arctic. Okay, and then gave evidence, probably attested. Yeah, I got lycra and that leads to Leroy. Yes, thank you. Dragon engineer looked up and anhinga or snake bird, which was over here could be darter. And that would mean that probably goes here. The subject of this museum, National Museum of Natural History. So it's nature. Citizen Ross says F1 paler, having less melanin, that makes sense. And let's see, Dagummit says that royal then gives us layers. Yes. Tonic for a fifth below dominant. Interesting, I didn't know that one. Filled that one in, that gives us O-N-I, which is casino. Liari says insured could give us entree. Oh, did we not? Yeah, we didn't use this one at all. Okay. Uh, Dragon Engineer also says that the branded chichilid is a severum. We have G1 is topple, uh, and that locks in Phelps as well. We have in row B, relations still. Could just be kin, and napkin goes up here? Abacus could fit down here. Cascabel? That sounds like it could be something. Dragon Engineer says could be notice for warning. Uh, pantheism. Yes, I like that. Apparently, cascabel chili is a chili pepper also called the rattle chili, says Citizen Ra. Uh, Dragon Engineer says themed for unified by an idea. That makes sense. Strongly disapprove of. Dagummit says condemn. Yep. So the grid looks like it's filled in. Let me, I guess, highlight the starred spaces next. NHM data? NHM data base, database, this is probably all one word, hosts. Host is a database of host, pl host plants and caterpillars. Words fit into the butterflies in two ways. The words for the left and right wings read down, but you must place them such that two common four letter words read across the fore and hind wings. The lists are in alphabetical order, so you must figure out which words belong to which butterflies. It's just a word fill, and we just have to make sure that we're making a valid English word when we read across the butterflies as well. So these clues are going to read basically clockwise or counterclockwise around one of the wings, starting in the top left or top right corner going in towards the middle and then down and out. Um, so Dragon Engineer says the right hand blue wing has to be sum. This C could be tick. Team then goes over here. This has to be alts. So maybe let's try to match something up with alts here or alum. Alum sounds the most promising. And then we'd have stir after that. So that's probably M-U-I-R here. Uh, Dragon Engineer found out dual for the blue left-hand side gives duos and lame. Yeah. So maybe beat and seam? That's, those are words. Slit and hack. Dune has to go here then. And we'd probably place the rest of these, I would guess. Prop and sax. Saga and scar. Daggum, it says dune, levy, and pink. 
that gives us Duel and Envy. Yes, for Prim and Pole. Completed our butterflies, completed our roses. Now we have to match them up. I'm gonna look up some of these butterflies first, like the, this one. Tyria, Jacob, A E A E. It's the Cinnabar Moth. I like that name better. I guess I should maybe try to look this up in in that that host database. Okay, so I searched for the Tyria Jacobe. And that's so that's coming up here. Host plant. Okay, so here's the list of the host plants. It looks like this one goes with the Compositae. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that the Cinnabar Moth, which is this Tyria Jacobe. I know none of these pronunciations are right, by the way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that goes up here on the Compositae. And based on how these moths are laid out, it looks like it's going to go along like the left-hand side of the flower and the right-hand side of the flower. So, this red butterfly is going to go here. Color it the same color red. And we'll see what we see. So are we looking for maybe places where the letters are similar? There's, there's one space on each wing where the letters are the same. B-E-E-S, this E is the same. And T-E-A-M, the M is the same. Okay, this Consul Fabius. Okay, it looks like the Consul Fabius, which starts down here, really likes this Piperacea flower. And the Piperacea flower is this one, the bottom left corner. This orange one's gonna go down here. We have the P matches up again, and Tick, the I matches up. Okay, so this is the yellow butterfly down here. Dragon Engineer suggests maybe we read it in reading order or in rainbow order by the butterflies from left to right. You're right that I should probably just be coloring them up here as I go. Yeah, actually I like your rainbow theory because we have some maybe empirical. Uh, so Citizen says the Drycocampa, which is this one down here, goes with the Phagacea, which is the rightmost flower. So we have our D and we have the Y, All right? I'm gonna look up the green one now, this Ciproetta, so the middlemost flower. The Apertura Iris goes with the top right flower. Thank you, Citizen Raw, for the help. And the light blue butterfly then goes down here. So when we put it all together, it looks like this spells empirical study. That's nice. Let's check that answer. That's correct. Solved the National Museum of Natural History puzzle. National Museum of African American History and Culture. The social meaning encoded into braids multiple layers brings with it centuries of accumulated information, beliefs, and practices. Braiding operates as a bridge spanning the distance between the past, present, and future. It creates a tangible material thread connecting people, often separated by thousands of miles and hundreds of years. So we have three braids are woven together at the top and then come separated at the bottom. I'm guessing we're going to have to braid the hair? We're gonna have to take the unbraided letters and braid them and it's gonna spell something? Maybe? When one gets crossed over, I assume it covers up a letter. Oh yeah, this is, this is starting to spell stuff. Did you know? If these are braid number one, two, three, it looks like we take one, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, and we're skipping stuff along the way. So after braiding, we have only two columns, and before braiding, we have three. Yeah, I'm gonna start by eliminating the letters that I think get crossed over, which for this first braid, if we look at this image again, for this first braid, we get two letters and then we skip a letter, two letters and then we skip a letter. And I'm guessing everything just repeats below that. So I think we're keeping two letters and then we're skipping. Keeping two and then skipping. So what do I do now with the second braid? I'm guessing we keep this O and then we skip the next one. So it, yeah, it looks like you're right about corn rowing. So, so we have, did you know corn rowing is so uh, it looks like we go, what, forward, forward, backward, backward, backward. Like, does I think it goes three and three. Irundi? Oh, Dragon Engineer thinks it's just, did you know corn rowing is Irundidi in Yoruba? Well, what would all the extra letters be then? 
Yoruba is an ethnic group that inhabits Western Africa, mainly Nigeria, Benin, and Togo. So that takes us up to here. And then we have H-I-L-E. So this is all making sense. And then we have these letters that don't make sense. And then Dragon Engineer says, I think I see a message in the skipped letters. Once you have finished bra, once you've finished braiding, do it again, starting with uh, row 17. So where's row 17? I'm guessing it's where it stops making sense. I'm wondering if we need these did you know facts or if I can move on to the... I think I'm going to try to jump into the second braiding. Dragon Engineer, you say that the, the two rows after each fact spell out hidden letters? Oh, so I would get like the HI here? Yeah, here, here it is. So we just have this part left that we have to braid again. I'm, I'm still thinking I should change these into the two column format. Now I think I braid these three sets like I braided above. So the first I skipped the middle row at the top. So I'm skipping this middle row here. Nice work. Now, what's left over? Oh, I missed Barbary Lions. Barbary lion is an extinct Panthera Leo Leo population that lived in the Barbary Coast regions. All right, let's check if our answer Barbary lions is correct. Uh, Barbary lions? Correct! Have a great evening, everybody, and as always, happy escaping! Happy escaping!